Brothers and sisters, tonight, insha'Allah, we are going to talk about the four aspects of what makes you. We're going to talk about, insha'Allah, the body, the soul, the nafs, which is the self-consciousness, and the heart, and how to develop them, insha'Allah. So let's dive into it. Firstly, I want to dispel the idea that whoever does acts of worship and lives a life of goodness and righteousness, I want to dispel the belief that your only reward is in the hereafter. And to say to you that Allah tells you, whoever acts in righteousness and good deeds will first get their reward in this life first and then in the hereafter. Allah said, in chapter 16, verse 97, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Man Amila Saliham Min Zakarin Aw Untha Wa Huwa Mu'minun Allah says, Whosoever acts righteously, whether a man or a woman, and embraces belief, we will surely grant him a good life. We will surely grant him a good life and will surely grant such persons their reward according to the best of their deeds, meaning in the hereafter. The ayah says, We shall give you a happy, goodly life now, here. This verse, as I said, removes the presumption that whoever lives a righteous life will only get their reward in the hereafter, but is a promise from Allah that you will also get a happy life in this world. But unfortunately, many people have the wrong mindset of what happiness is. Happiness for most people is outwardly and materialistic. Happiness for many people is about themselves and what they receive from the temporary world that is perishing. We live in a time where individualism and me, myself and I is the only thing that matters. Brothers and sisters, that's not where happiness comes from. Happiness comes from looking in ourselves and our makeup and to develop and nourish our inner selves so that it doesn't matter what happens to you in life, good or bad, somehow you're still happy. Somehow you're still strong. Somehow you're still optimistic. Somehow you can keep smiling. Somehow, somehow you can st still keep going. And somehow you still love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you fear nothing but Him. And somehow you feel you own the world. So let's look into this. Allah warns us and tells us that most people get their happiness from materialism in the following verse. اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور إن سورة الحديد 
Allah says, Know everyone that the life of this world is but amusement and diversion and adornment and boasting to one another and competition in increase of wealth and children. Like the example of a rain whose resulting plant growth pleases the tillers, then it dries and you see it turned yellow. Then it becomes scattered debris. And in the hereafter is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And what is the worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion? So brothers and sisters, happiness will not come from there. And everybody who follows it only failed more and more. Brothers and sisters, let us now define the makeup of this human being. And the makeup of this human being, by the way, is similar to the makeup of the jinn. Have you ever heard of the life form called the jinn? The jinn are mentioned in the Quran. They are made of the flame of the fire. The only difference between us and them is that we are made from earth clay and they are made from the flame of fire. However, everything else about them is the same as us. Allah says, I have not created the humans nor the jinn. I have not created the jinns nor the humans because they were created before us for any reason except to worship me. I do not want any provision from them, nor any food or drink. Meaning, your duty is not that you need to sacrifice things to God, or you need to feed God, or put food and drinks before an idol. Allah says, no, I don't need any of that. You worship me because I'm there, and that's how you connect with me. And that's how you will find your purpose and your fulfillment and your happiness. Connect with your Creator. And let's understand why. The human being, brothers and sisters, is made up of four things, according to Islamic belief, according to the Quran, and according to how the prophets and messengers taught us. So the Islamic belief is that the human being is made up of the physical body, or the mechanical body. Everybody knows this. It has three definitions or three terminologies in the Quran. The human body has three different Terminologies. The first one, al-jasad. The second one, al-jism. The third one, al-badan. Al-jasad means a non-human form of a body. Al-jism means the human form of a body, but void of intelligence and void of consciousness. And al-badan is the corpse of the human after they have lived and they have died. It's called the badan. We'll come back to that. The second thing we are made up of is the soul. In Arabic, the Quran says ar-ruh. And we will talk about the soul or the spirit. Number three, we are made up of something called a nafs A nafs is hard to translate in English. But the closest meanings I can find are the self-consciousness and the subconsciousness. When you are conscious, you are aware, you make choices, and you are a person who is able to do right from wrong. Another word for the self or the consciousness or subconsciousness is also referred to as your lower state or your egos, desires, temptations. It's a force that you can't touch. It's called an nafs Number four is al-qalb. You are made up of the heart. The heart has two descriptions, two characteristics. The physical heart, which pumps the blood throughout your body. That's the heart which doctors treat, and you can transplant that heart. That heart the flesh and blood and the muscle has no effect on your belief, your faith, your consciousness, anything. It's just an organ of your body. Some people, they, I, I said this because some people have asked me, is it halal to do a heart transplant between somebody who's, for a good person, let's say, needs a, a heart, from a person who's known to be evil, for example, or a disbeliever or something like that.
They think that if you put the heart in there, it's going to affect your iman or your faith. That is incorrect. There is absolutely no effect. That's called the physical heart. The second meaning to the heart in Islam is called al-qalb. Al-qalb, my dear brothers and sisters, is also hard to translate, but the ulama have brought a close meaning. It is the inner divine compass which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed attached to our heart which pumps and throughout our body, our mind, our sight, and the rest of our feelings. It's like a moral compass. You feel something is right or wrong. But it's not just you personally. Everybody feels it. Have you ever heard someone say, follow your heart? What is that? Follow your heart means that inner divine godly thing which Allah gave us that makes you feel the right from wrong. My brothers and sisters, let's go through each one. The first one is the body. We said there is the non-human body, the human body, and the corpse. The non-human body, why did I mention that? The non-human body is a living thing. It is the thing before you were conceived by your mother. It is a life, but it doesn't have a soul or a conscious or a conscience or anything like that. For example, the sperm and the egg. It is a body. It is a life. The atoms that make it or the embryo, which is first conceived in the mother, all the way up to 120 days. That is called al Jasad, which means a lifeless body or a human, a non human body. Some people they say to me, but I thought that you only live if there's a soul in you. Yes, in one way it's true, in another way it's not. There are bodies that don't have souls in them, but they live. Did you know the embryo, you and I, when we were embryos, before we turned into a human form? We have a heartbeat at, the, at 40 days of conception. And that is why your mother, if she's pregnant, she can go, or your wife, to the hospital and get an ultrasound. And you can hear and see the heartbeat and blood flow, even the brain development of the embryo, at about 40 to 50 days. But the soul has not yet been placed into it according to the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ. So it brings me to the second one, called the living human mechanical body, the anatomical being, the human being. At 120 days, you change into a different form. You are a human and you start developing. That is when you become a body of a human, but not yet obligated, not yet accountable. You don't yet feel and are aware of your conscience or your consciousness and it is that time when your soul is placed in you and your human consciousness is placed in you the nafs but we'll talk about that in a minute as well and lastly brothers and sisters is the corpse the evidence that I want to use for the human form that is inside the womb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something about it and he compares people who walk on the earth after they're born, they're no longer in their mother's wombs, but they have not yet developed into more than just thinking about their outer body. There are people who walk the earth, they have no purpose in life except their desires, their temptations, serving and feeding this body, and no other reason except to live, do your best and then die. Nothing else. Allah mentions this about the hypocrites at the time of the Prophet وسلم, where Allah said in Surah Al-Munafiqoon وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ وَإِن يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشُبٌ مُسَنَّدًا Allah says when you see them the hypocrites, the people who don't know why they're living, and they're two people in one, conflicting, their appearance impresses you. They look good. They look wise. They look intelligent. They look smart on the outside. Everybody can dress nice. Everybody can look nice. 
And when they speak, you listen to their impressive speech. They speak nicely, they speak well. But they are just like worthless planks of wood leaned against a wall. No other purpose but that. Allah warns us not to be just a body that lives life purposeful, purposelessly like an animal. That has no other purpose but to serve the human, to graze, to die, to be a beast in the, in, and, and just take care of the ecosystem or the uh, biodiversity and that's it and then die. The human is far more important than that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the beautiful hadith, listen to this hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari number 3036. Each one of you is constituted into the womb of the mother for 40 days and then he becomes a clot of thick blood for a similar period. So now that's 80 days. And then a piece of flesh for a similar period. That's now up to 120 days. 40 plus 40 plus 40. Then Allah sends an angel who is ordered to write four things. An angel comes down. We don't know the characteristic of this angel. But among the uncountable angels, this angel has a duty. Ordered by Allah for each single person, there is one of these angels. Each one of you had this angel who came and touched you and was there near the womb or inside the womb of your mother in a certain way that Allah only knows and wrote in a way that Allah only knows four things by the order of Allah. He is ordered to write down his deeds. What is this person going to be doing in their life? Not what they are going to make him do, not what Allah wants you to do, but just writing a pre-record of what you're already going to do. And then closes the record and goes. His livelihood. What kind of a life are you going to pursue? They just know, Allah tells them, this is what they're going to pursue. Write it for me, come back. His date of death, that's an order by Allah, they have no control over that. Your date of death is already in the womb at 120 days. And whether he will be blessed or wretched in religion. Not that Allah wants them. What kind of a life are they going to live in faith? Are they going to be wretched? Or are they going to follow the guidance of Allah?